Well, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Robert, and uh, I'm going to show you about uh, some of my red elemental blasts. Excellent. So um, here we have too many red elemental blasts. We've got some uh, French and Italian, and some fourth and revised. But let's get to the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, since that's what we came here for. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have some fun today. So I will do my best to get to all the fun things within the 20 minutes, because as we've all established, uh, we can talk about the card we love forever. <laughs> and uh, here is the Red Elemental Blast Binder. And we start with a uh, page of betas, because that's fun. But uh, here we have the global set. And so I have been sort of prototyping a nice way to display the global set since the um, best thing we all love to do as Magic players is collect a bunch of cards and put them in a box and never show anybody. So in an effort to not do that, uh, I've tried to make something that's easy to kind of hand off to my friends or to people who don't know about Magic and kind of display something, uh, what I like to call like a museum piece. So mm -hmm. I've got, you know, first, you know, of course, we have the Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Revised. And we have a little bit of information uh, printed on stickers and onto more Red Elemental Blasts. Um, just to sort of add some context. So, you know, of course, we have the, what's nice about the Alpha and the Beta next to each other, you can kind of see how the differences between the two took place. You know, you have the different color variations that are very, you know, well-known with Red Elemental Blast, and you have the fact that in Alpha, Red Elemental Blast was printed as an instant, so half of the card didn't work, and it was corrected in Beta as an interrupt, so that it worked as intended. Um, but the idea is to do something like this throughout the binder. Um, we're not quite there yet, but the front page looks excellent. Um, let me just move this on camera a little bit so you can see a little bit better. But, um, yeah, so we start off, of course, the, you know, uh, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and Revised. And then we have the rest of Revised in FBB and White Border as well. Um, and so we have, you know, the French, the German, and the uh, Italian. Um, and then we move on to uh, fourth edition. Um, and so we have all of the original printings in these languages in black border, and then the reprints in other languages in the white border as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it fits very nicely in SF12. Yeah. It's wonderful. Um, love it. Uh, as we continue, we get to the newest printing ever at Elemental Blast, um, which is from M25, and we just have... Uh, English, Japanese, and Chinese here, um, but it is the notably the first printing in foil, which uh, was really cool if you were like me and collected elemental blasts. Um, unfortunately, Chinese is very difficult to get, so that was a, a challenge. But you know, mm -hmm. we we got there, um, and you know, that's for the bulk of red elemental blasts. That's the collection in the sense that we've got just those printings. We've got alpha, beta, unlimited, revised. 4th edition, and then to M25. Um, after that, we get to some sort of fun, you know, uh, extra sort of printing. So that's where we get to um, the fun things like we have the Summer Red Elemental Blast. We have the Alternate 4th. We have the um, Pro Tour Red mm -hmm. Elemental Blast that was put in the sideboard. Then we have the Collector's Editions and International Editions. Um, I'm choosing to display them as two copies each, so you can see the front as square corners, and then mm -hmm. you can see the back where it actually says collectors or international. Makes it kind of visual since you want to see the backs of those cards. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, right here we have sort of the two more difficult to find ones. We have the Alpha Cut Fourth and the Alpha Cut Revised, um, and I include them as part of, for me personally, I include them as part of the global set simply because I define it to me as anything I could open up in like a box or a booster pack. Mm -hmm. And because of these were sort of, you know, accidents that you could open in booster packs, at least to my knowledge, um, I include them here. Um, but they are uh, difficult to find, uh, as uh, anyone who's collected has, uh, has realized, the, uh, especially the uh, Alpha Card Revised. Yes, yes, do you think that the Alpha... Uh, yeah, yeah, Revised is harder than Fourth, yeah, yeah. Yes, and for, for me, I have four Alpha Cut Fourth and only one Revised. And I've only seen one Revised show up in the last couple of years. Uh -huh. um, so, of course, I salivated at that and <laughs> had to have it. Um, now, what was interesting is in 
acquiring the Alpha Cut revised, I actually went ahead and purchased a, uh, a corner cutter. So this little device here actually lets you cut corners mm -hmm. because I wanted to prove to myself that this one was factory cut and not cut afterwards. Um, and so I got a little microscope and compared. I made my own Alpha Cut just to see, and it is different. And as a result, I've learned things that you can do to be more certain. Um, obviously, if someone has enough time, energy, and willpower, they're going to fool you if they really want to. But I'm uh, I'm fairly confident with that, and I'm happy with it in my collection. But yeah, I think that little machine cannot apply the same pressure as a factory machine. So Exactly. So if you look closely, you see differences. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if someone wants to go to the factory and do it, then by I guess it's factory cut <laughs> at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so Rattlement of Less is a, is a nice, easy collection. Well, easy, right? Uh, compared to some of the others like Lightning Bolt or Fireball that might have a million printings. Mm -hmm. um, but as we continue, we get to some of the fun things. So here I have some misprints, some oddities, um, some kind of different things. So right here I have an error on revised cards that I like to call like an oil stain. It's got, you can kind of see... Three matching oil um, oh, yeah. blots is right there. And I'm not entirely sure what caused them, but they are uniform in all three of these. So at first I thought maybe it was like sun, sun damage, but because they're uniform, um, it might have been a print run error that affects all three, which is kind of cool. I uh, found them in a collection. I went to a, a local store and just bought all of the Red Elemental Blast they own. Um, and those happened to be in there, so that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, but over here, I have a couple of off-centers um, that are just big enough to sort of be important. Finding mm -hmm. miscuts is kind of difficult. So, But these kind of off-centers are nice. We have a, a small like printing defects that are probably hard to translate on camera. This one is missing some black in some of the misprint groups. I've uh, uh -huh. identified it with, uh, with a microscope a little bit better. Um, but as we come over here, we get to some fun things. So we have some NFCs, you know, the... Small Red Elemental Blast in Island, yeah. um, which is a lot of fun. And then we have one of my favorite ones, the 4-cut um, NFC. So it's my uh, Red Elemental Blast that's also Tree Folk and Tranquility. And I always forget what this one actually is. Energy Flux? Um, energy, there we go. Energy Flux, sure. Possibly. I'm willing or to it. I don't know. Um, cost um, 2 at the upkeep phase. If the controller pay extra, does 1 damage for each unpaid. It's... It's something weird that probably doesn't see... No, I don't think it's an energy flux. It's something else, yeah. I took the time to figure it out at one point, and uh, of I've forgotten. Because the only part I care about is this little square, right? Maybe <laughs> we can check it now uh, with an uncut uh, yes, sheet. Yes, that's, that's no? I did it the first time. Um, but it's been a bit... But here are my, uh, some of my other Alpha Cut Fourth. Um, and then we have some nice crimps. So we have a revised crimp and a beta crimp. And I'm actually going to pull the beta out so we can kind of see it just a little bit better. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a nice screen. It's not so small, but it's nice. Right, yeah. So that one was a nice one to acquire. Um, I feel like the beta crimps are a little bit more difficult. Um, the revise is very similar, very even and uniform underneath the, uh, the text box there. Um, and then we have this one is a um, Spectral Chaos playtest card on a red elemental blast. So it's a sticker that was put on a red blast, which is uh, kind of fun for me. Uh, and then we have an alpha off center, not quite miscunt, but you can see the uh, big black border at the bottom. That one was fun to find. I um, think my skeleton is from the same sheet. Uh, yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it's exactly the same off center, yeah. Uh, and then we have a red elemental blast that has this sort of like ink splotch error. And it actually translates a little bit on the back. You can't see it, but when inspecting, you can. Um, so I don't, I haven't been able to determine if it's actual just damage or if it mm -hmm. was damage in the factory or whatnot. But either way, it's an error on an alpha, and for me, that that's that's super cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have this burned card, which um, a local player who had a podcast uh, set it on fire on her podcast. Uh, and her um, video, and I was just like, when I, when I saw this happen, I was like, I ha you have to give that to me. So I made her <laughs> cash and give it to me. 
Um, uh, you saw the detect it, and the blue card on the top is a powered leak. Powered leak, okay. Yeah. Interesting. That's right. I think that rings a bell. Well, cool. Thank you for that. <laughs> Um, so then, as we continue, we have uh, some signed cards. We have one actually signed and altered by uh, Richard himself on an alpha. Um, that one's nice. Some betas, some other FBBs, FWBs, some of the uh, alters that I've collected over the years. Um, we have more signed cards. One of my favorite pieces here is the original alter, or rather re repaint of Red Blast by Richard on a um, M25 uh, proof. So it's signed by Izzy and by Richard and then altered with the original uh, Red Blast art. Uh -huh. um, and that's special for me because at some point, Richard threw away all of his Red Blast proofs. So very, very few actually exist in the wild and the rest of them got destroyed. So for someone like me, who's never gonna convince someone who has it in their private collection to ever give it up, um, this was the closest I could get to getting a uh, an artist proof. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, some other artist proofs, the foils and non foils, which came in a set, which is the only blue card in the binder. Uh -huh. uh, that's why I have it here. Um, and then we start getting into some of the extra spaces uh, where I have multiples of cards. But this is where I get to some of the fun extra things. So in uh, I was trying to collect as many Red Blast related things as possible. This is where we got into the uh, playtest card. So we do have a uh, Gamma playtest, uh, nice. Elemental Blast. Um, and of course, I have it displayed in this nice little acrylic frame um, next to the uh, Alpha Blast that it became. Can you um, show it a little better to the camera? Because there's a lot of. Uh, better. Better now. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Great. 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 Yes, so this was a nice way to keep it out and displayed. Um, short of grading the card, up until recently that was really difficult to do. Um, this was a nice way that wasn't very expensive to display it. You can find these on Amazon or online pretty easily. Um, but with that, we also have a uh, Epsilon playtest card. Um, and then we have some Spectral Chaos playtest cards. And so the Spectral Chaos started off, this is the first one. It started off as Elemental Blast, and then it turned into uh, Waterlog, uh, which is a, a fun uh, fun little name. And then they uh, simplified it and actually gave it art and put a log in water, which I find incredibly humorous, and I love it. Um, and they uh, all three of these came from the same playtester um, as a set, and for me, it's awesome. Yeah, it um, makes for you and for everyone. <laughs> exactly. So um, what's nice here is this, the game playtest is actually signed by the playtester. I got it signed by Joel. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of nice. And then the uh, Epsilon also came from Joel as well. And with these with these four, he actually included a, a letter of uh, authentication um, as I acquired them after they were starting to become popular. The uh, Gamma was acquired uh, before that, so I had him sign it just to kind of prove that it was real. Mm -hmm. um, Very nice. But uh, these uh, these have blown up in popularity since I have acquired them, and I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to get more um, for a reasonable price. Um, but uh, those that. So then some of the kind of other rarities or oddities that come with collecting red blasts is, of course, you have the play mat behind here, mm -hmm. but then you have a calendar page. Um, so Magic produced a calendar for 1997, and each day had a card, and I was able to acquire the day for Red Blast. So Wednesday 9th, uh, or July 9th, happy Red Blast Day, everybody. Um, that's a fun thing. And then with that comes a soda um, that was given out at uh, <laughs> Grand Prix. So uh, if you're not a collector until you've collected the soda that goes with your card, um, I'll say that much. So I went to a GP. I played a bunch of side events to grind for tickets so I could get my Red Blast soda. Um, so odd things, right? And of course, we knew when you start a collection, you, you don't know your need. You, you don't know you're gonna have to collect a soda when you start it. So that was something that was a surprise to me. And luckily, I was able to get it at the GP itself because mm -hmm. it's 
pretty hard to get them out. Uh, otherwise, I've seen some empty bottles show up on eBay from time to time, but we have one full soda. So my uh, my collection includes a soda, which is uh, entertaining. Um, so after we finished the the global set, we started going towards graded cards. And that's when we started going towards the uh, global graded set. And so uh, Sorry, Rob, we have a few minutes uh, sure. still, but uh, just to let you know. Yeah, but show, show. So I'll just go show these real quick. We've started the global set. We've got it primarily in English. Um, but we've got some fun things in here. So we have a graded uh, Alpha Cut fourth. And then we have a really fun kind of grading oddity, which is on the um, Pro Tour card. I'm hoping it shows up on camera. They put the simile autograph on there because they wouldn't grade it because they thought the autograph was real. And as we all know on the Pro Tour cards, the signature is printed on there. And so they wanted to make absolutely certain that nobody thought it was a real autograph, which I think is kind of fun. So um, that is pretty much the bulk of the collection. Um, we have, you know, of course, we've started grading. Um, we were able to get the uh, Alpha Cut fourth graded, uh, and ironically, the centering was worse than the corners, which I thought was funny. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that's kind of where we're going. You know, it only goes deeper from here, right? We can only find more misprints, more oddities. I do know, though, I do know that there is a Make Ready card with a Red Blast on it somewhere in the world. Um, for fun, we did start the uh, sequential Alpha grade going all the way down so far to seven. So that's a fun journey to go through. Now those have skyrocketed in price and those are kind of hard to get. But um, we, have a, we have a few more things real quick. I don't want to take up too more time. But let's get through some of these pages, more Red Blast, all some of the extras, and some of the weird oddities. We have some sun fades that I took the time to make. We have some of my old school signed and altered and acquired cards from old school, uh, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun and I'm happy to have in my collection. Um, and then we have all of the alternate fourth. So here's, or not alternate, yeah, alternate fourth cards. So I've collected quite a bit of those uh, for fun. But that's, uh, that's the collection. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, I could talk about this for hours. Um, there's a lot of cool things, a lot of things I've learned about magic along the way, which yeah. is uh, the whole reason why we do this, right? You know, to enjoy the game that we love. Yeah, it, it was amazing. Thank you very much, Rob. I mean, the global set, the basic one is not very ex extensive. It's not many cards, but you have found a way to really uh, bring it along to be a, a really cool global set. Yes. So it's, it's amazing. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me, and I appreciate anyone who's watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. I I'm sure everybody in the chat enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, thank you very much. We're going to see another red card now, Fireball. Perfect. Uh, so that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.